Hi, I'm Doug Jensen with Vortex Media. Welcome to the fifth episode of Sony's XTCAM Essentials video training series. Today, we're going to talk about shooting in low light conditions using a couple of interesting features on Sony camcorders called Slow Shutter and Night Shot. Slow Shutter, or EX Slow Shutter, as it's sometimes called on the camera menus, is a variable setting that lets you increase the amount of light that the camera is able to capture during each frame of video thus producing noise-free images in low-light environments and offering many creative possibilities. All three of Sony's new XTCAM HD 422 cameras offer a slow shutter mode. It's probably easier to understand if I just show you an example. Here's a shot at dusk with slow shutter turned off and now with slow shutter turned on. That's quite a difference. Normally a video camera exposes each frame of video for a maximum of 1 30th or 1 24th of a second, depending on the video format that's been selected. And if the shutter switch is turned on, as it should be for normal shooting, then the exposure will be even shorter, such as 1 48th, 1 60th, or even faster. Now obviously, those fast shutter speeds don't allow very much light to enter the camera, which is exactly what we want for normal shooting conditions when there's adequate light. But for low light shooting, slow shutter is a handy tool to have in your bag of tricks. Now to turn on slow shutter with this PMW100, I just press the menu button, select the camera set menu tab, and then select the menu called SLS EX SLS. There are 10 slow shutter options to choose from, ranging from 2 frames of accumulation up to 64. You can see that the light gathering capability of the camera gets better and better the higher I go. In fact, 64 means the camera can collect 64 times more light than when slow shutter was turned off. Just for comparison, here's what the shot would look like with 18 dB of gain instead of slow shutter. Notice how the picture is a lot noisier when the gain is used. However, slow shutter does have one important side effect to be aware of. If there's any motion in the shot, or if the camera moves, you'll get motion blur. And that motion blur can either be a good thing or a bad thing, depending on how you use it. In fact, I almost always use slow shutter when I'm doing time lapse shots because it results in very fluid, smooth flowing motion that otherwise wouldn't be possible. Compare these two shots with and without slow shutter turned on. As you can see, there are many creative uses for slow shutter, from beautiful noise-free stationary shots to ghost-like images of motion. Your only limit is your own imagination. The second low light shooting function I want to talk about today is called night shot. Now, as you may recall from the first episode of this video series, I mentioned that the PMW100 is the only XTCAM camcorder to have night shot. So if you've got a PMW 200 or 160, don't bother looking because your camera doesn't have it. Night shot allows you to shoot not only in low light, but even in total darkness. Or I guess I should say total darkness to the naked eye because the PMW 100 can see wavelengths of light beyond what is humanly possible. For example, here we see a nicely exposed shot in our studio. And not surprisingly, when I turn off the lights, the camera can't see anything at all. And I can't see anything with my naked eyes either. The room is pitch black. Opening up the iris to the maximum f-stop doesn't help. Turning off the shutter doesn't help. And even boosting the gain doesn't help either because there's no visible light to amplify. All gain does in this situation is produce a noisier picture. Now let's turn on the camera's special night shot mode. And we see that the camera can literally see in the dark. To my naked eye, nothing has changed, and the room is just as pitch black as it was before. But with night shot turned on, the camera now has superhuman abilities to see in the dark. If you were in the room with me, you wouldn't even be aware that there was a camera here recording you, which is exactly why night shot is such an indispensable tool for military, law enforcement, nature and wildlife documentaries, and of course, reality television shows. Now obviously night shot has a unique look to it and may not be something you'd want to use every day, but for the right situation it's a great tool to have on board the camera. And although some consumer cameras also offer night shot, the PMW100 is the only camcorder that provides professional controls, 
time code, XLR audio inputs, and your choice of several broadcast quality 50 megabit per second video formats all recorded on XDCAM, so the footage you shoot will fit perfectly into your existing workflow. And Night Shot isn't just for shooting in total darkness, it's great for all kinds of low light shooting, especially times when adding a visible light to your scene isn't possible or wanted. How does Night Shot work? Well, let's take a quick non-technical look at it. First of all, there are a couple of ways that Night Shot can be turned on. As we saw earlier, you can use the Night Shot menu found on the Camera Set menu tab, or you can do what I've done and program one of the camera's four assigned buttons to activate Night Shot, which is a heck of a lot more convenient. On my camera, all I have to do is press assign button number three, choose execute, and the camera is ready to shoot with Night Shot. Now a couple of things happen to the camera when I turned on Night Shot. First, the camera's internal infrared cut filter, or ICF for short, physically moved out of the way from in front of the CMOS sensor to allow the infrared light to come in. Listen closely and you can actually hear the IFC move back into place and then out again. Every video camera has an ICF to block unwanted infrared light, but what makes the PMW100 unusual is they can be moved out of the way when you do want that infrared light to come in. A second thing that happened when we turned on night shot is that an invisible beam of infrared light started emitting from right here on the camcorder. I mean, what good is having a camera that's sensitive to infrared light if there's no infrared light to be seen? Watch what happens when I wave my hand in front of the beam. Of course, you can turn the infrared light off entirely with the camera's menus, but I suggest leaving it on. I found that the built-in infrared light is sometimes good enough for faces or other subjects that are within a few feet of the camera, but notice that the pattern of the infrared beam is pretty narrow. It doesn't reach very far, and it almost has the appearance of a weak flashlight. Therefore, if you're really serious about getting great results with night shot on your PMW100, let me suggest that you invest in a more powerful external infrared light that will provide a stronger beam and wider coverage. There are many different models of infrared lights available from several manufacturers, but my favorite is the Mini Plus IR from Light Panels. Believe it or not, it's turned on right now and shining at full blast, but you'd never know it because there's virtually no visible light emitted. The Mini Plus IR has a well-earned reputation as the go-to infrared light for reality shows and high-end productions worldwide. It's constructed of rugged, anodized aluminum so it can handle the rigors of professional production, and it can be powered from many types of sources. But what counts most is how well it lights up a scene. And as you can see, that's where the Mini Plus IR really delivers. Take a look at this shot using only the PMW100's built-in infrared transmitter. And here we see it with the Mini Plus IR. That's a big difference, and it really shows what the PMW100 is capable of when you provide it with proper illumination. An excellent feature of the Mini Plus is that it can be dimmed from 100% to 0% in order to help you get the exposure perfect. And that's a very important consideration, because when you turn on night shot, you'll have very little control over exposure on the camera. The iris is automatically open to its widest setting, and there's no auto iris function at all. The shutter is automatically turned off, and you can't change that either. The only thing that you do have control over is the gain. Watch what happens as I change the gain from 0 dB to 9 dB and 18 dB. But be careful. Although it's helpful to be able to change the gain when needed, you'll want to use it sparingly because it does add unwanted noise to the image. Well, that's a quick look at a couple of powerful features found on Sony XD Cam camcorders that can help you shoot in low light and no light situations. And that brings us to the end of our fifth episode of XD Cam Essentials. I hope you found this video helpful and I invite you to tune into our next video. Until then, happy shooting.